Hi folks, we're going to take a look at this question from the October 25 homework. Uh, this is 47 B, and they want us to find a simplified expression for the area of this shape. Now notice I've got two of them here, because I'm going to do it in uh, two different ways. In fact, there's other ways to solve this problem. Uh, first thing I want to mention that uh, the side lengths that are given all have variables in them. Okay, so it stands to reason that our final uh, expression will also have variables in it. Um, the problem being here that this is not a regular shape. Uh, so just as you would have done uh, last year, the previous year, when you're trying to find the area of an irregular shape is you try to split it up into uh, a combination of shapes that you do know how to take the area of. And in this case here, I think it's pretty clear that we can split this up into rectangles. Okay. Now there's more than one way that we can split this up into rectangles. I can cut it off here and create this small rectangle and this large rectangle. Another reasonable way to do that would be to cut it off there and get these two rectangles here. Okay. Another way in which you could solve the problem, I won't do it here, is to think about extending the rectangle, having a really large rectangle, and then subtracting the portion that's not included. Okay. So that would be a third way of solving this problem. Okay, so in order to solve this, though, we need to now find the um, missing uh, missing dimensions here. Okay, so what I'll do, again, because I want my communication to be very clear, is I'll call this rectangle 1, and I'll call this rectangle 2. So if I look at rectangle 1, I already have the length of this rectangle. It's just 2x. What I'm missing is the width of the rectangle. Okay. So how do we find that? Well, we know that this whole side is 4y plus 7, okay? And we know that this portion here is the same as that one there, is 3y. So if we want just that little part, we just subtract the total length of the line minus the part that we're not including, okay? So this length here would just be 4y plus 7 minus 3y, okay? which we can now simplify by combining like terms. So 4y minus 3y is just y, and then we have the plus 7. Okay, so now we have the length and width of this smaller rectangle. Okay, let's take a look now at rectangle 2, the larger one. Well, I already have the width of the rectangle. Okay, that's 3y. What I need, though, is the length of this rectangle here. Now we don't have it, but if we look above, we see that this line here is a combination of the 2x plus 3 and then adding this part here, which is the same as the 2x. So if I'm looking for the length of this rectangle, I just have to add 2x plus 3 plus 2x to get the total length. And again, by combining like terms, this gives me 4x plus 3. Okay, and now I have enough information to find the area. So I want to find the total area. So notice here how I'm being very clear about what I'm finding. And since I've labeled these two rectangles, one and two, I know that the total area is going to be the area of rectangle one plus the area of rectangle two. Okay. And now I can input. So also notice that I'm going vertically. Okay. The way a solution should be shown. And so now in order to find the area of rectangle one, well, I multiply the length times the width. So that's 2x times the width was y plus 7. Okay, so notice this length multiplies the whole width. So I need to put brackets around the y plus 7. And now I'm going to add in the area of rectangle 2. So here we have its length, which is 4x plus 3 times its, its width, which is 3y. Okay, and now I have a polynomial equation that I can simplify. Okay, so here I'm multiplying a monomial by a polynomial, so I know I have to use the distributive property. So here, 2x times y, well that's just 2xy, and then 2x times 7 is going to give me plus 14x. Okay, now here, I have, again, a monomial times a polynomial. So remember, it doesn't matter in what order I do the multiplication. So again, I'm multiplying this monomial. I have to 
use a distributive property. Okay, so here we have 4x times 3y, so 4 times 3 is 12, positive 12, x times y, no simplification that we can do. And then here we've got 3 times 3y gives me 9y. And of course at this point here I have to add together like terms and the only like terms are the 2xy and the 12xy. Okay, so we have 2 plus 12 is 14xy. Then we've got plus 14x and then plus 9y. Okay, so now let's do it the other way and ensure that we get the same answer because the area doesn't change regardless of how I split this up. Okay, so let's do this one here and see if we can go a little faster. Okay, and in fact, I'm noticing here that if I look at this rectangle, hey, look at uh, if I call this rectangle 1 and rectangle 2, let's take a look at rectangle 1. I already know the length of rectangle 1, and I know the width of rectangle 1. Same thing with rectangle 2. I know the length, and I know the width. Okay, so perhaps with some forethought, I would have seen that this was the easier way to split up this irregular shape. Okay, but I definitely did want to show you this other method. Sometimes it doesn't work out so nicely. So let's do it this easier way now and make sure that we get the same answers before. So again, I'm going to get put in my total area is area of this rectangle 1 plus the area of that rectangle 2. And now I go ahead and find the areas. So 1 is going to be length times width. So 2x plus 3 times 3y, okay, and then here we have plus area 2, which is length times width, so 2x times 4y plus 7, okay, and now we do as we did before. Distribute to complete this multiplication, so 2x times 3y, 2 times 3 is 6, and we're left with xy, and then 3 times 3y is 9y, and now for the second one, we have 2x times 4y is 8xy, 2x times 7 is plus 14x. And here we have our two like terms, and we see that it's going to give us the same answer as before. 6 plus 8 is 14xy plus 9y plus 14x. And here we see that this is exactly the same as that one. Because 14x plus 9y is the same as 9y plus 14x. Okay, addition like multiplication is commutative. Okay, so when you see a question with an irregular shape, you always want to think about splitting it up into shapes that you can find areas of. And then make sure that you're being very clear as to how you're finding any missing dimensions. And be very clear about what it is that you're actually determining. So for example here, total area, I was very clear in saying what area one and area two represent. Okay, that's it for this one folks.